It's the Alcan Highway. I'm going mm -hmm. home. We're unloaded. And it is just covered in snow. It's only getting thicker. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get to a better place so I can wait out the storm. Guys, welcome back to another week on the Homestead Trucker Channel. This week, we're in a Mac, but not just any Mac. 197. And she's going to Alaska. In the truck, we just gotta organize everything because it's a Mac, and, uh, not a lot of space, but we've got our microwave, we've got our cooler. That's all we need, man. Howdy, y'all. Grand Forks, North Dakota over here. Me and dad are swapping. So, done tightening up these back straps over here. We're in Grand Forks right now. Just got off the phone with the dealer, and supposedly, Carlisle, the trucking company, also is a crane company, they do everything. If you ever watched Istro Truckers, they're the ones doing all the work for us. So it's gonna be real interesting to get on the Dalton, uh, to go see them. Now, uh, I don't know if it's the actual ice road, but everything's melting there right now. So there is a cold front moving in Sunday night. Um, today is the 29th of March. So it gives you an indication. We're getting ready to walk through our first snowstorm here in North Dakota getting on the US too and headed west to get to Minot. And I know Minot's under about four inches of snow right now. So I'm tempted just to wait it up. <laughs> Why? Because I don't want to put on chains. I don't like chains. Light me up in the comments if you will. I'm, I'm a Southern boy. Will I use them? Hell yeah, I'll use them. But I don't want to use them if I ain't got to use them. I just don't like freezing my hands off in the middle of winter for two and a half hours, only having done it once in my life. And <laughs> I don't want to do it again. Oh boy. Hey, load looks good, but those back two straps, like normal, they slopped down. Every time I stopped, they slopped down. I'm tempted just to tighten them and to keep the straps around the back side. But the problem is, is what you told me was that the strap runs around the weight board or the metal yeah it runs right in between and the fact that we're doing a lot of bouncing that metal can cut into the strap or the carpet and or damage the metal so we're just not to stop more than we're accustomed to stopping which is good DOT says uh, every three hours or once 180 miles to check the load that's after you first get it on your trailer. Then after that, yeah, I'm not really sure about that. I can't remember. I just know uh, I stop more. I keep my eyes on the load, but uh, it's usually every 180 miles is what I do. Uh, if you can tell, we're not in our truck. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so as of right now, this is May, excuse me, March 29th truck is still in Peterbilt and um, Peterbilt is telling us we need to rebuild we don't believe it we don't believe it uh, everything that's uh, telling us is something else we, we talked with the, the engine shop down there a uh, Hoffman diesel again good bunch of boys they've got friends that work there uh, and he wasn't exactly sure who worked on it but uh, we're on our way back through from Alaska. That's where we're at right now. Uh, we're technically in North Dakota getting ready to cross the Canadian border. On our way back through, we'll pick up the old truck and drive it home and, and pray that it don't, uh, you know, break down on us. But if it does, we'll tow it. There's just no, no, there's no fix to the truck. I mean, after we spent, you know, thousands of dollars, you know, and no sooner are we fit closer to a solution. So, anyways, y'all take it easy. Thank you for watching. And if you guys made it this far, like and subscribe because, man, it helps the channel out every day. I'm, I'm growing, I'm trying to get, you know, uh, the channel out, I'm trying to get some more people. If you like this content, just keep watching. I appreciate it. It really means a lot to me because I'm working hard. I'm trying to, uh, just trying to put out some good content for folks that really, really like this sort of stuff. Dad's over here driving and <laughs> we're in the nasty. Okay, at the border again. Gotta do some more paperwork.
It's all right there. And if we don't do it right, it's fifty thousand dollars down the hole. The hole. Okay. Value of all the boats. Yep, there's the yeah. there's the second boat. Yeah, these are the two stamps we'll have to get. And then the trailer. Trailer. Oh, okay, good deal. Yeah, sweet. Howdy, guys. <clears throat> Edinson over here, and we're just leaving. Just got a shower. Got everything uh, cleaned and ready, and moving forward. We're now headed to oh, geez, well, Dawson's Creek. If I can make it there. And um, that's where we want to stop and get fuel again because we made it to well, over here in Edmonton to get fuel. I put in a good bit and probably 180 gallons worth uh, on a 200 gallon system. So I, I stretched it as far as I could. And I didn't want to stretch any more than that, but I knew I could get fuel here. So that's why I did what I did. Um, and then now. We've got about 1,840 miles left to go, so we have knocked off, I mean, 22, 23, oh, I don't know, 2,300 miles. Yeah, we've already knocked off 2,300 miles. So it is a 4,000 and a 1,600 miles, excuse me, 1,600 miles. So we've knocked off. So we're, we're at the halfway point. <laughs> That's where we're at, the halfway point. But other than that, we're going to get back on this road over here in Edmondson and keep on going. Because we still got a long ways to go. I got to work one more full shift. Dad's going to work one more full shift. And then I want to work the last eight hours to get us there. Because we got 33 hours left to go. So technically, if I was to give it up now, we both had three full shifts. But well, he would have one, I would have two. But anyways, let's get to it. <sighs> Gotta chase that dog. Gotta chase that dog. Howdy, guys. Okay, so, got another Peterbilt dealership, but I got a Mac. So here's what happened. Um, literally about 15 miles back, alternator just quit working. I got a 12-1. It went from like a 14 to a 12-1. I've been cold weather and all kind of stuff. So they just wanted me to pull around the side of the building. They're going to run a couple quick checks. Check the alternator. Check the battery. If they got parts, we'll swap it out and kind of go to town. Um, it's lucky that we found one in town within, you know, really, really close. So let me pull up here. Found the problem. That idler pull is going bad. It's not putting you in tension. Seems like it, but it's an easier fix than an alternator, so we'll see. Now we gotta see if we can get a hold of a part here in town, or if we're gonna spend a day or two waiting. Oh boy. Let me tell you one of be would be owner operators. Repair bill. Yeah, that's that's a big deal. Bring money to the table. Run older trucks. Run the cheapest thing you can get your hands on. That's all I can say. And then just hang on for the ride because it's going to be one. And so the reason why we're here at a Peter, Peterbilt dealership in Grand Prairie, I think I've already said this once, is that our Mack truck blew a um, idler pulley. <clears throat> Struggle is we're in the middle of nowhere. Uh, the closest one is in Peace River, Alberta, which is two and a half hours away from us. Um, we were lucky that, that they had a part, and um, the idler pulley is really easy to change. Just one bolt, thing comes off, you know, slap the bolt back on, you know, put your wrench on it, and it tightens the belt up again and goes. Because the, the pulley just let up. I mean, it, it was just, it was done. So... Luckily, we do have a hot shot service going after it um, and bringing it to us because the part literally is like, it's just, it's in the size of my hand. If it weighs five pounds, that's it, you know? So they got a taxi service doing, they're doing a thing for us. Um, Peace River Taxi Service, pretty, pretty cool. 
I'm not sure how much all this is going to cost, but 15 minutes worth of uh, mechanics labor and, uh, you know, the part and taxi. And then that way me and Dad can still make our delivery time by Monday. So today is Saturday, right, Dad? Uh, Saturday? Yeah, it's Saturday. Yes. It's Saturday. And uh, it's 1037 local time. We still have 1,550 miles to go. Yeah, long ways. So right now we're ETA getting there before the, before the uh, belt tensioner broke. Um, it was about 11.30. Um, now it's probably going to be like 5 or 6 o'clock at night, uh, depending on how long all this takes. Um, and we'll just kind of go from there. I mean, so found the part. Be here at 1 o'clock. Taxi service is bringing it, and it's two hours away. We'll just sit in these comfy chairs and watch Starsky and Hutch on AMC. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> okay, guys, back on the road, but hey, we're in Beaver Creek. Here's a beaver. It's a Texas sized beaver. Woohoo! Look at that. Yeah, we're back on the two lane, y'all. That's fun. The roads have been pretty, pretty gnarly. Uh, Dad, you want to tell him about your harrowing no. flying experience? Traumatic. Traumatic. Oh, okay. That's 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 the word today. Traumatic. Was you and David Copperfield trying to do a magic trick with the rings, and you just were in midair or something? What's going on? No. No. Okay. Was it Houdini? No. No. Okay. All right. Well. Seth yeah. Cooper. Oh, it was me. Okay. Hey, I was doing 55 in a 70 mile an hour zone. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, no joke. The roads were like this, y'all. I mean, just like this, just weaving up and down. Okay, guys, let me uh, explain something to you. I just crossed in the Yukon, and uh, we're about, I don't know, really close to 850 miles away from, uh, from Fairbanks. And this entire trip, this back boat has been the bane of my existence. So this one strap right here, and the sister strap on the other side. We normally route them across here and they, they all want to slip back like this right here. This is where we like to normally have it, route it. The reason being is because this strap, this piece of metal can connect and they'll cut each other. That's fine, it's just two straps. We stop every freaking hour and a half, two hours come back here and tighten it again. Why? Because the roads here are extremely bumpy. And with that, I'll, fi I'll fix that in a second. We'll have this. The carpet here and this carpet here. Thankfully, we fixed this about 200 miles into our trip uh, when we first started. We rolled this carpet forward a little bit. This hasn't moved. This bottom piece and its sister piece on the other side. On the other side over there hasn't moved. Now, this piece of carpet and its sister piece over there, they have moved forwards, backwards, up, down. They've just moved everywhere, but they don't like sitting still right there. So what do we have to do? Break this down, raise the leg up, you know, the trailer leg, slide everything back, drop everything back down, all to keep the underside of this paint beautiful. Like factory. Meanwhile, yeah, there, there's this, there's, that's where I'm at. Sorry, hang on. Watson Lake, that's where I'm at, Watson Lake.
it's circling around Fairbanks, so Highway 1 might get missed, but I know it'll probably get slammed tonight or tomorrow. Is that what the weatherman said, Dad? It looked like it was going to be just hit and miss. I'm okay with that. Yeah, this is not a fun road, y'all. Not a fun road. See the straps behind us. The bump straps. They're good. They're tight. They're good. They haven't slid back yet. Oh, ain't nothing like being a truck driver chasing that dog. Ain't nothing like being a truck driver chasing that dog. Looking, looking. Well, we're almost to the border. Al can probably other 60 miles to an hour, but if I can just keep this daggum road from shaking us loose. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know, let y'all know that uh, this is gravel road we're on. Yeah, Al can does have it and does go back to asphalt. It does that for a minute. Wow. But this Mexican food is even better. Woohoo! Alrighty, we're still getting closer and closer to Fairbanks. We only got like 345 miles left to go, but man, these potholes are getting bad. They are just something to be excited about. Ain't they right, Dad? A bull hockey. <laughs> you can't say that. That's gravel road, boys. Gravel road. Apparently from World War II, they haven't really updated this playing on too much. It does this a lot. It goes from gravel to asphalt. Dirt road. It's pretty packed down pretty hard, though. I'll give you that. All right. We are here, boys. Welcome to Alaska. Wow. Yeah, all vehicles must. Look at the asphalt. That's nice. Yeah, I like it. That's nice. Okay. 55 mile an hour up here. Finally, something we can read and understand. Buckle up. It's the law. Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay. Yeah. All righty. I'm gonna put the phone down, boys. I gotta go do some business. They may not want to be filmed. Hey guys, we're at the customer. <sighs> Carlisle Yard of all places. Ice road trucking. Seriously. That's actually pretty cool. All right, here we go, boys. Got the two big ones this time. Almost tailor-made. I think they're uh, heisters, yeah. I would suggest, this is a suggestion, we can move these tires out of the way and swing the hitch out and then come underneath the four inch because you'll grab a, it'll be a lot stronger underneath here. Underneath the frame and grab it from underneath here. That would be my suggestion. We've done this before. Okay. Uh, these are new operators that I have. Oh, I'm not trusting them. Then never mind. It's already popped that. So yeah, let's get these tires out, pull that hitch out, and we, we can grab it under that hitch. Well, good deal, boss. Good deal. I was just, I, I, was, I was a little scared for you, that's all. All right, there we go. Getting it done right. Good job. Just don't want 
bend it. What's that, sir? I wonder why they don't strap the back end of the boat. I wonder if that's what you're hearing bouncing around. No, no. Because uh, what one's the boat on the trailer? So what we do, as you see those back hooks back there? Yeah. We'll take a strap and we'll come down through there. We'll go down underneath the back side of the boat through the oh, back okay. side of the trailer and then point it down towards the load okay. on both sides. And that, that, that holds the trailer and the boat together because yeah. going down the road, those straps will vibrate and will beat the paint off the back. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. I think you can pull forward. No, they haven't lifted. Okay, they lift the front up a little more. You, you guys need me to pull forward? Okay. Okay, so trying to film at this place, um, it's kind of tough um, because they don't really want their names and faces too much to be on on YouTube or anything like that. So. Um, I'm just getting the, what little I need for the company, and sorry guys, it's just the way comp this company is. Um, they've had issues before in the past with YouTube, not YouTube, uh, the ISRO truckers thing. So there's a drama concerning that. Um, I don't know all of it, but I do know that uh, that's why they got out of the gig, that and it was an issue of safety. So some reason some dude with the camera sitting in the passenger seat holding it and while you're driving 70 mile an hour down the road is yeah, I don't know, but uh, this, is, this is the best I can do. Sorry, y'all. We will, however, got a free hat. <laughs> he gave me that, so it's pretty good. All right, let's get the second one unloaded. Well, we got the front lift, front lifted. No damage. Never worry about the the nose of the boat. Oh. Yeah, boy. Oh, hi. Yeah, these fork truck operators are brand new. Both of them are. This is their first day on the job, literally. They're doing all right. We good to go? Okay, all right. Because if it comes off, it's coming this way. That's fine. We'll move it, buddy. We're going to have to go up higher. <laughs> Told me to move. <laughs> He's really worried about these new drivers. Hey, Dad. Yeah, he got it. <laughs> he told it. All right. Got to clear that back ramp. That's why they're lifting it higher and higher. He's taking his time. Oh, what we got here? Oh, box truck. Okay, let's go. All right. Came through here yesterday. This is what it does in a day. 